We're staying in our more dimensioning.dwg file, and what we're looking at is more dimensioning techniques. So in the previous video, we looked at how we could edit our dimension text in an AutoCAD dimension. What we're going to look at now is some really nice commands that are available to you in AutoCAD, and they are the ability to space your dimensions and also add breaks to your dimensions as well. But to do that, we need to add a few more dimensions first. So I'm going to go into the Annotate tab now on the ribbon, and you can see there's the Dimensions panel there. And the nice thing is, is you can use the Dim Layer override if you wish this one here so make sure you're using the a 010-d underscore dim layer for your dimensions and then we're just going to place two more linear dimensions so I'm going to click on the fly out here select linear and the first one of these is going to go from this point here this end point here and then it's going to come across to the intersection so you can come across and intersect there. Use your polar tracking and your object snap tracking. You want to intersect with that grid line and click. And then as the dimension comes up, you can see you've got a 9398. Now, you want to place that as close as you can to the 3048 for now. You'll see why in a minute. And then last but not least, we'll do another linear dimension. And this time we'll go from here, this intersection here with the grid bubble, to this intersection here with the grid bubble. And we'll just drag that one down a little bit as well. Get it as close as you can to the one before. And there's a deliberate reason for that. Now at the moment, they look a bit higgledy-piggledy. So we're gonna use the dim space command. So if you go up to the dimensions panel here on the annotate tab on the ribbon, it's going to be that one there, adjust space or dim space as it's called. So you select it and select the base dimension, which is going to be our 3048. You then select the other dimensions you want to space in the drawing, which would be the other two dimensions that are there. Press enter to confirm, and you can either enter a value or you can do what is called an auto setting. Now, be careful with the auto setting. Sometimes it can cause a few issues and they kind of end up sitting really, really close together and it still doesn't look right. So I'm going to actually put a value in there of 700, 700 millimetres in our metric millimetres drawing because everything in model space is in millimetres. When I press enter now, you'll see they all space nice and neatly. If I go back to the home tab on the ribbon and go back here to measure and distance and I measure a distance between there and there, you can see the spacing is 700 between my dimensions. So I'll just click on exit there now. So it just gives you a nice, clean, regular spacing for your dimensions in your drawing. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deliberately commit one of the cardinal sins of dimensioning in AutoCAD. I'm going to go back to the Annotate tab on the ribbon, and I'm going to select a linear dimension. I'm going to come off of this endpoint here, left click, and I'm going to pick a point, let's say that endpoint there, left click. And I'm going to come vertically upwards and click there like that. Now, we have the cardinal sin of dimensioning. We have extension lines crossing, and nobody knows which way those dimensions work. So, for example, people might think now that 9601 is the distance between that intersection and that intersection. It's not. It's actually 3372. But I just want to demonstrate something to you that is really clever. And if you have got extension lines that cross, it allows you to break things up a little bit. So I go up here to this icon here on the dimensions panel on the annotate tab on the ribbon. It's the dim break command. So I select it and I select the dimension I want to add or remove the break to. So let's do 9398 first. Let's do that one first. And then I select the object to break the dimension, which is the 3372. And you'll notice it adds those lovely little breaks in there like that, which allows this 3372 dimension to display correctly. What I'm going to do now is press enter to confirm, do the same again, dim break again. I want to add a break to this dimension and then it's the 3372 that's going to break it like so and then press enter to finish. Now the lovely thing about this is these remain whole dimensions even though they've got breaks in them. You can see when I select them they're still all one dimension which is really useful but as you can see it breaks everything up and allows you to have a tidy drawing. 
Now, what happens though if I remove this 3372? If I select that and I delete that dimension, the dimensions go back to their original state. I don't even have to use the dim break command to add or remove the break to the dimension. The breaks disappear as soon as the dimension causing the break is removed from the drawing. So that's utilizing dim space and dim break in your drawings to keep your dimensions neat and tidy when you're annotating in AutoCAD.